my channel and turn on the bell notification so that you'll get um, notified when I post videos. And even if you're already subscribed, could you check to make sure that that bell thing is on? Because if it isn't, uh, YouTube won't tell you when I upload videos. And honestly, even if it is, YouTube still might not tell you if I upload videos. One of my friends, or well, my friend and my boyfriend who both are subscribed to me, like, they keep telling me they don't get notifications when I post videos, and like, come on, right? <laughs> so, also, um, last week I did a button pressing video on, like, old cell phones and my old, um, Nintendo DS. So, if you're interested in that kind of thing, please check it out. I'll put, like, a thingy up there, and I'll link it in the description as well. Um, you know, so you don't have to like scroll back through and find it after, if you want to listen to it after this video is over. So yeah, um, another one more thing before I get started is, um, I have a couple of videos that are really close to getting a thousand views, and if you don't know how like YouTube monetization works, basically you get paid each time your video gets a thousand views. So I'd like to get those videos that are like 800 or 900 up to a thousand. Um, and they're all very interesting true crime cases, of course. So, if you want to check any of those out and help me make that $5, <laughs> um, I'll put them all in the description down below, um, links to them, so you can check them out after this video or whenever, really. Alright, so, I think that's it for the pre-video spiel. So, this case is the case of the Osaka Dog Lover Murders. Did I say Osaka? I think I meant Saitama. Yeah. Um, there's another video that I did on a case that's really, really similar to this that I'll mention um, in this video because they're, like, they're not related, but in the media they were sort of compared to each other because they're very similar. Um, the Osaka Dog Lover Murders, which were perpetuated by someone else but around the same time. Um, and of course this case and that case both involve dogs. No dogs are injured in these videos though. Uh, well, I'm not sure about this one, but the other one there aren't any, um, nothing bad happens to any dogs. Just people. <laughs> so, yeah. Alright, so main perpetrator in this case was a guy named Ken Sekine, um, and he was born on January 2nd, 1942, and his wife also was involved in this, so they were sort of a couple, a murdering couple. So Ken Sekine was born, like I said, on January 2nd, 1942, in Chichibu, Saitama Prefecture. After graduating high school, he worked at a pachinko parlor, which is like, uh, I'm pretty sure it's like Japanese slot machines, like it's just a gambling thing. Everyone loves to gamble, right? Um, and later he worked at a Chinese restaurant in his hometown. One night, the restaurant burned down in a mysterious fire that also killed its owner. Rumors went around that Sekine had killed the owner and set the fire to cover up his tracks, but that was never proven, so obviously he didn't face any charges. When he was in his 20s, Sekine started breeding dogs, and later he would, he would earn a bit of a celebrity status in the dog breeding industry for popularizing the Alaskan Malamute breed in Japan. Some sources claim that Sekine was also responsible for the boom of Siberian Huskies. Sekine originally ran a pet stop shop, a pet shop, and animal leasing business, what does that mean, in Chichibu, like for movies maybe, I don't know. He gained notoriety for his malicious business practices, often stealing dogs and selling them to customers. Seriously. Or killing the customer's dog and selling them an entirely new one. Okay, I lied about no dogs getting hurt in this video, I guess. <laughs> Local residents also complained that he looked after dangerous animals like tigers and lions. Due to growing tensions with local Yakuza, which if you're not familiar with the Yakuza, they're like basically the Japanese mafia. Um, you 
usually don't want to mess with them either. <laughs> Sekine moved temporarily to Ito, Shizuoka Prefecture, but he returned to Saitama Prefecture in 1982 and opened up the Africa Kennel in Kumagaya. Sekine was adept at predicting people's behavior, and a lot of people were drawn to his unique humor and speaking skills. On the other hand, many of his peers avoided involving themselves too deeply with him due to his business practices, propensity to threaten customers, and his friendship with local Yakuza. Because like I said, most people try to avoid them. In addition, Sekine was a pathological liar who made a lot of bragging claims to not only acquaintances and customers, but also in media interviews with the aim of advertising his store. One lie was about his missing pinky finger, which he claimed had been bitten off by a lion in Africa, but in reality it had been cut off by members of the Yakuza for his failing to pay debts. The, the Yakuza likes to cut off people's fingers. I've heard that, like, um, if you're a mom, I was about to say Makuza, <laughs> Mafia and Yakuza, but if you're a member who, like, messes up somehow, they'll make you cut off your own, like, finger dip to, as, like, a form of atonement. And, you know, the more you mess up, obviously, the more fingertips you start losing. According to one of his accomplices named Ekio Yamazaki, Sekine followed a set of five rules that he called his murder philosophy, which were, number one, kill those who are not good for the world. Hypocritical. <laughs> Number two, do not kill for insurance purposes because you'll get caught. Three, kill the greedy. Four, it is important not to shed blood. Five, the most important thing is to make the body disappear. I think there's one rule that he forgot, honestly, which would be don't have accomplices. Don't work with other people. The less people who know what you did, the better. But you know. Yamazaki, the accomplice, further claimed that Sekine often bragged in private about committing the perfect crime, that he would never get caught, and, quote, if there was an Olympic event for killing, I would get the gold medal. Despite Sekine's enthusiastic and boastful attitude, he was often described as being small-minded and nervous, which was reflected in his obsession to constantly get rid of any incriminating evidence. Yamazaki, the accomplice, said that while he was always afraid, Sekine was confident that he would never be caught. Oh, he was wrong. So, now I'm going to talk about his wife, um, who I'll talk about more about her, like, actual involvement in the crimes later, but this is more just about her and, like, how they met and stuff. So, his wife's name was Hiroko Kazama, who was born on January... On February 19th, 1957, in Kumagaya, Saitama Prefecture. She was raised by her father, a childcare worker, and later a real estate agent. A quiet but strong woman who loved big dogs, Kazama was studying to work as a land surveyor to help her father out financially. In 1983, she visited the Africa Kennel where she met Sekine, and the pair got married uh, not long after. Both partners had been previously married, Sekine having having been married three times before, and Kazama having been divorced with two children. So in order to show her devotion to him, Kazama carved a dragon tattoo on her back as a sign of their unity, as opposed to his previous wives, who had just tattooed his name. That's a red flag. Some theories suggest that Sekine had married Kazama due to her father being rich, and, you know, her having a hefty inheritance that she was entitled to, while others suggest it was for her ability to present herself at dog shows and manage finances. I guess she was pretty. I don't know what that present herself at dog shows thing means. If it's not that, she was just pretty. In order to prevent Sekine from wasting their money, Kazama faked their divorce and started living as his common-law wife, which allowed for her to be appointed the president of the company. On the surface, it seemed um, to be a joint stock agreement. I don't really know what that means exactly. It's a business thing, I guess. But the actual management of the company was supervised by Sekine, while Kazama dealt exclusively with the finances. And so now I'm going to talk about the accomplice, Ekio Yamazaki, who was born in Toyama Prefecture in January 1956. 
He was a bulldog breeder living out of a remodeled freight car in Katashina, Gunma Prefecture. And he first heard of Sekine after seeing him participate in a dog show when he visited the Africa Kennel to learn about um, Sekine's management philosophy. He was unexpectedly invited to work there as an executive. But in reality, Yamazaki became Sekine's driver and unwilling accomplice. So, now on to the actual um, crimes. I wanted to find the name of it in Japanese. Saitama no Aiken ka Satsujin Jiken. That would be the Saitama dog lover murder incident. So, Sekine's MO consisted of dismembering the victim's corpses, which he called, quote, making the body disappear. All four of his known victims were dismembered in Yamazaki's bathroom, and their bone, skin, tissue, and internal organs were cut down to several centimeters. The bones were then incinerated in drums, along with clothing and personal items, the ashes of which were then disposed of in the forests and rivers of the surrounding area. Sekine also came up with the idea of burning the bodies themselves, but since he knew it would generate an unpleasant and easily, easily noticeable odor, not to mention a giant amount of smoke, but I guess if they're in the middle of nowhere, it might not have mattered. Um, he burned them only until the bones were left, then checked to make sure that there was no leftover flesh. I guess so that there would be no smell. When doing that, Yamazaki claimed that Sekine found it interesting and fun. So, the first victim was Akio Kawasaki, who was a 39-year-old executive of an industrial waste treatment company in Gyoda, who befriended Sekine after visiting the Africa Kennel to buy a dog. At the time, on the encouragement of his older brother, or of his brother anyway, Kawasaki um, was looking to expand his business ventures into dog breeding. And to that end, he bought two Rhodesian Ridgebacks for 11 million yen, which I think would be about eight, disposed of the body parts in the Usune River in Kawaba, and 
Sekine killed Sekiguchi with Strickening and went ahead and stole $2.7 million from her, which I guess would be about $20,000, $18,000. According to Yamazaki, Sekine dismembered her remains like his victims before her, but unlike them, he uh, got his necrophilia on a little bit before doing that. The next morning, he burned her remains and her ashes were thrown into the Nudi River. It's believed that Sekine decided to murder her pretty much all on his own um, because there was nothing that indicated that Yamazaki even knew um, Sekiguchi before her death. There were suspicions, of course, that Kasama might have been involved because, you know, it was his wife, it was his, her husband's mistress. But um, there's really only circumstantial evidence to support that theory, and she wasn't, she didn't end up getting charged with the killing at all, so. On the day after Kawasaki's disappearance, I think he was the first victim, his family filed a missing persons report to the Gyoda police. I just poked myself in the eye. At first, they theorized that Kawasaki had just run away, but after his car was discovered in Tokyo, an investigation got launched. Interviews with family members revealed that Kawasaki's dis- you know, that Kawasaki had had disputes with Sekine who um, was the subject of multiple rumors concerning earlier disappearances already. So the police started monitoring him in Yamazaki, and they eventually linked Kawasaki's disappearance with those of Endo, Wakui, and Sekiguchi. Unable to arrest Sekine for the murders due to having insufficient evidence, the second investigation division considered arresting him on fraud charges related to the construction of the new kennel. But they uh, ultimately decided not to do that either. On January 26, 1994, serial killer Yoshinori Ueda was arrested for murdering several dog breeders in Osaka, and he's the one um, who was part of the who was he did the Osaka dog lover murders that I was talking about earlier. And so, even though he had nothing to do with Sekine at all. Um, rumors started spreading that similar cases were happening in Saitama Prefecture, and so in mid-February, I guess of 94, um, the media focused their attention on the Africa Kennel, basically on a daily basis. I guess, I don't know if they were staking it out or, like, just reporting about it, but Sekine insisted on his innocence the entire time, and the families continued to insist that, nah, he probably did it. But the police had no evidence against him, and so their accusations were just considered baseless. Then, on September 22nd, the Saitama Prefectural Police arrested an acquaintance of Sekine's who was a former Japan Ground Self-Defense Force officer from Omama on unrelated fraud charges. Um, the media insinuated that he might know something about Sekine, and during the interrogation, the officer admitted to being somewhat involved in earlier disappearances and hinted at Sekine's responsibility for the more recent disappearances. On October 17th, the police attempted to solve the case by questioning Yamazaki, who denied any involvement. After he ran away with his second wife, the police issued an arrest warrant for her on charges of embezzling 50 million yen from a construction company. So that would be about... $37,188. Yamazaki's wife was arrested, and Yamazaki himself later agreed to an interview with investigators, which resumed. And so he resumed being interrogated basically on December 3rd, and he eventually confessed that he was involved. Ten days later, Yamazaki guided the investigator to Katashina, where he gave them the location of Kawasaki's remains. As a result, Sekine and Kazuma were arrested on murder and concealment of a corpse on January 5th, 1995, with Yamazaki also being arrested for the same charges three days later. 
from January to February 1995, um, acting on Yamazaki's Confessions, the Saitama and Gunma police forces conducted a joint search centered around Kuma, Gaia, and Katashina for the bodies and any other evidence. During the search, they covered a lot of different locations, such as Kumakaya, Katashina, Kawaba, Ishirasawa, Tone, Gangnam, Kawagoe, Niza, and others. As a result, bone and teeth fragments, amulets, which are, you know, like religious necklaces, I guess, watches, and other items were found on Oze National Forest, with additional unburned bone fragments, uh, cell phones, house and car keys, and dentures being found in the Nudi River. Due to the fact that some of the bones were burned at high temperatures, DNA testing was uh, not possible on those ones, but authorities managed to identify the victims through the leftover personal items. Not too smart on Sekine's part there. A large number of investigators searched the river to locate the objects, finding a lot of personal items that would serve as material evidence later on in the trial. A similar situation was reported in Gunma Prefecture, where an investigator found discarded metal objects that had been there for as long as two years. In addition to extremely scant physical evidence, the trial was prolonged due to Sekine and Kazuma blaming each other for the crimes, while the prosecution argued that all three parties were equally to blame. I mean, obviously. In addition, Yamazaki, who had given full confessions at the investigation stage, had cooperated willingly and had even struck a plea deal with the prosecutors, and so he refused to testify during the trial because of all that. So, on January 7, 1995, Yamazaki's trial was held at Urawa District Court, which is now Saitama District Court, and the facts of the indictment were generally acknowledged. So I guess no one, there wasn't any evidence to contradict um, the stuff they said in, in the indictment. And so, on July 24, Sekine and Kazuma were brought to trial in the same court with Sekine pleading no contest, apparently. His lawyer criticized the prosecution for not disclosing evidence or affidavits, while Kazama claimed that she had been threatened into submission to help dispose of the bodies and was not involved in the murders or dismembering dismemberments themselves. In the Kawasaki case, she admitted that she had driven his car to Tokyo with Yamazaki, but denied knowing that it was his or why she was even doing it in the first place. On October 6th, at Yamazaki's third court hearing, he testified to confessing due to an agreement with the prosecution, but at his, um, but at Sekine and Kazuma's trial, he refused to testify. He claimed that that was due to the Urawa district prosecutor going back on his word to release him if he gave enough evidence. He also revealed that he had negotiated to have his wife released on bail, I guess from the fraud charges. The Urawa District Prosecutor's Office said at a press conference that his wife's bail had been carried out through due process, and so they basically denied the existence of any kind of agreement. Since then, Sekine and Kazama's defense counsel argued that Yamazaki should not be considered a reliable witness due to his tr judicial transactions. I don't know about that. Plea deals are pretty, uh, pretty common, right? When the prosecutor in charge of keeping Yamazaki as a witness appeared at trial on July 19, 1995, he admitted to allowing him to meet with his wife, but continued to deny making an agreement with Yamazaki. On November 2nd, with the participation of judges, prosecutors, and lawyers, the Katashina crime scene was explored for verification. Fifteen days later, the prosecutor's office demanded a three-year prison term for Yamazaki. In response, his defense counsel pleaded to a lesser sentence, and because of that, he was acquitted and given a suspended sentence for the murder of four people. On November 20th, Yamazaki appeared as a witness. Oh, maybe... Okay, yeah, that was, um, the prison term for Yamazaki. I thought, that, I thought it was talking about Sekine. I don't know, that still doesn't seem right. Anyway, on November 
November 20th, Yamazaki appeared as a witness in the main trial for the first time. The cross-examination was conducted, but as declared previously, he refused to testify, and in subsequent appearances, he criticized the prosecution, the police, and the judges. The prosecutors initially planned to have Yamazaki as a key witness, but they resorted to the affidavits at the investigation stage in the end, since obviously he wasn't cooperating. On December 15th, Yamazaki was sentenced to three years imprisonment for his participation in the murders. While it was acknowledged that he was coerced, it was pointed out that he was not physically abused or kept under surveillance, was only verbally threatened, had many chances to conduct contact authorities, and participated in the crimes of his own initiative. He later appealed a sentence to the Tokyo High Court, but it was dismissed, and he served a sentence in full before being released at some point. I mean, why is he complaining he got three years for being an accomplice to four or five different murders? Like, he got away like a bandit, honestly. On September 3rd, 1998, when asked a question at his trial, Sekine, who until then had neither denied or admitted responsibility, finally confessed to being involved. But he claimed that the murders were masterminded by Kazama, and that Yamazaki had killed the victims, while Sekine himself had only participated in order to protect his wife. Following that statement, the, cu the couple started constantly confronting each other in the court. On July 6, 2000, the prosecutor's office demanded the death penalty for both Sekine and Kazawa. Closing arguments were held for four consecutive days, from October 10th to October 14th, with Sekine pleading for life imprisonment while Kazama asked to be found not guilty. Approximately five years since the trial began, after a total of 105 court sessions, the defendants were finally convicted. On March 21st, 2001, the Urawa District Court sentenced Sekine and Kazama to death. In the final statements, the judges scrutinized the convicts, the convicts' statements as conflicting and intricate, and pointed out that even if there were secret agreements between Yamazaki and the prosecutors, Sekine's confession included facts which only the perpetrator could have known. Because of that, even if there were certain falsehoods or exaggerations, his confession would still be considered credible. The former couple eventually admitted to killing three of the victims besides Endo, who they claimed had been strangled by Yamazaki. However, no discernible motive or incentive could be found in this claim, and that was quickly rejected. Concerning the Kawasaki and Wakui cases, while it was acknowledged that Sekine was the principal masterminded murderer, it was also noted that Kazama willingly offered to participate in both crimes, and was therefore held as equally responsible. When it came to the Sekiguchi killing, no conclusive evidence could link her, Kazama, to the crime, and so Sekine is considered solely responsible, but the fact that the former claimed the latter masterminded the whole idea and that the possibility of an accomplice was not impossible. Um, that was considered during the judgment, basically. I guess that means that, like, you know, um, what was that guy's name again? I already forgot what the accomplice guy's name was. They are basically just saying that Yamazaki and Kasuma could have been involved, but they really had no evidence of that, I guess. So, on October 5th, 2000, the couple's first appeal was heard at the Tokyo High Court, with their defense alleging that there were factual inaccuracies in the first trial. After his release, Yamazaki was brought in as a witness, but his testimony was considered ambiguous, except for criticizing the prosecutors, defense counsel, and the legal system. He also testified in Kasuma's defense for some of the time, but he never really gave a clear reason as to why. On October or I mean on four, February 14, 2005, Kazuma admitted to a degree that she was involved in dismembering the bodies of Endo and Wakui, and on July 11, the Tokyo High Court dismissed the appeal of their death sentences. Both of them later appealed to the Supreme Court of Japan, but on June 5, 2009, Justice Yuki Furuta dismissed their appeal, and on Dece June 22, their death sentences were finalized. So, like I mentioned, Sekine was suspected of murdering other people, of like being involved in other people's disappearances before the main ones that I talked about. And so now I'm going to talk about those. So, back in 1984, at least three men and women connected to Sekine disappeared in Chichibu. And 
Japanese god of fortune and wealth. Kazuma, who is still on death row, continues to assert her innocence, which is um, supported by Yamazaki, who, for his part, says that Sekine had, con had coerced them both into committing the crimes. So, there is a film that came out in 2010 called Cold Fish by Sion Sono that was loosely based on the case. And there have also been books about it. Um, one of them is called The Saitama Dog Lover Murders by Shima Nagayuki, which was published on January 9th, 2000. Another book called Sympathy for the Devil by Keiichi Hasumi, published on January 12, 2003. And in Japanese, that title is Akuma o Awaremu Uta, which is translated to Song of Pity for the Devil. Innocence from the Prison of Despair, a collection of innocent death row prisoners, written by Ken Kataoka, Susumi Oishi, and Shigeru Satomi, and published in August 2nd, 2016. And let's see, that one in Japanese is Zetsubo no and finally, there is a book called Original Mob Boss Talks About Retaliation, Humanity, and Justice The Truth Behind the Saitama Dog Lover Murders Written by Takada Yanyama And published in December 28, 2016 I don't know who the original mob boss is that they're referring to there. I'm sure it's not Yamazaki. Which is Jinki no Hofuku Moto Yakuza no Oyabun ga Kataru Saitama Aiken ga Satsujin Jiken no Shinjitsu. Shinjitsu Tankoban. Shinjitsu. And so, that is all I have about this case. I hope you found this case interesting. Uh, leave me a comment down below about what you think. Um, I don't know if there's an execution date for Kazama the wife. The way that I've read that it goes in Japan, usually when they have the death penalty, is that um, the actual execution date is usually a surprise, and it's usually decided on close to when it's gonna happen so like they might know I don't know if they only find out that day or like a week in advance or like a month in advance but basically I don't know I've read that like you know people who want to get rid of the death penalty think that it's cruel to have the person just sitting around and wondering you know when they're gonna get executed and I mean to be fair that like kind of sucks obviously but I don't know if murderers really deserve sympathy, right? <laughs> but they've... Kazama has literally been in jail since the early 2000s, and I think she still is. She's still on death row. There wasn't anything about her having gotten executed yet. So... At this rate, she'll probably just die on her own, like, um, Sekine did to begin with. But yeah. Um... Like I said earlier, um, check out those other videos that I'll have linked in the description if you're interested, if you want to watch something else after this. Um, and let me know down in the comments what you thought about this case. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you again.